In this video, we're going to be talking about rotational kinetic energy, and we're going to see an example as well. I love listening here. The physics teacher <laughs> says that friction, air resistance, and energy loss can be ignored. <laughs> I love it. All right, so let's remember what happens with linear motion first. Well, let's just remind ourselves with linear motion what happens. Well, we have this equation for kinetic energy, right? The EK. You can look this one up in your data book. It's one half m v squared, but it's also equal to the momentum squared over 2m. So this is an equation that you can use. That's for linear uh, kinetic energy, or you could say for translational kinetic energy. However, for rotational, well, we have a version of that as well. So let's write this one down here. So it goes ek, and if you know how this first one goes, then you'll see how the second one goes. So it's still one half going on here, yes. But instead of mass, remember the rotational equivalent is moment of inertia. And instead of V, we're going to put an omega squared. That's also going to be the same as, well, what's the linear momentum? Remember, it's called L, so it's going to be L squared over 2. And what's M again? Oh, yeah, M is I. So it's going to be this. It's going to be EK equals 1 half I omega squared, which is the same thing as L squared over 2I. And let's remind ourselves of all the different players here. So kinetic energy is in joules. Uh, let's do this. Angular velocity. Well, that's in radians per second. I'll just leave it like this, actually. Radians per second. Okay, good. Moment of inertia. Well, that's uh, mR squared. So it must be kilograms meters squared. So the units for angular momentum, let's remember that angular momentum is I omega. So that'll make it uh, kilogram meters squared. That comes from the I. And omega is per second. We're going to ignore the radians. So there we go. And that's it. That's everything we need. So remember, there's a rotational equivalent, right? So the rotational kinetic energy is some equivalent to the linear kinetic energy. So let's look at an example. So we're going to have here a solid sphere it has a mass m, has a radius r, and it rotates about its center with a constant angular velocity omega. OK. Now, uh, we're told that the rotational kinetic energy of this sphere, let's see, it's supposed to be e. OK, what does that mean? Uh, well, we'll figure this out in a second. Um, we have the moment of inertia of a solid sphere. We're told it's 2 fifths mr squared. OK. And then we're told now we have another sphere. This time, that one is also rotating, has a mass m, has a different radius, and a different angular velocity. Question is, let's find an expression for the second sphere's rotational energy in terms of e. This is what I would call a ratio question, because we're, we're not told actual numbers. We're told just sort of a letter. So the way I always deal with these questions, I always deal with them in two ways. I say old, I say new, and I always do new over old. That's how I'm going to solve this. I'm going to say new over old. So I just need an equation for old first. So what do I mean by that? I mean, what's an equation that governs this behavior? I need to find an equation basically for the kinetic, uh, rotational kinetic energy. So I need this. So I, this is going to be called E in this case. So let's go back and get it. We have E equals, well, half I omega squared or L squared over 2I. Which one makes more sense? Well, I'm given omega and I'm given I. So it must be the one that has I omega squared. So I'm going to use one half I omega squared. There's my old equation. Now let's actually uh, go a little step further and open up the I, so to speak. So let's see what happens here. So I, remember, in this case here, the I is 2 fifths m times r squared. All that is still times omega squared. Does anything happen? Yes. Notice I can have my twos cancel out. So then I end up with my equation that old, so to speak, is just going to be E equals, let's see, I've just got uh, mr squared. All right, like this. So m, I have r squared, I have omega squared, and I have that divided by 5. That's it. That's my equation for sort of old. Now I need a new equation as well. So let's do that one. So I'll do new. Now, those who are used to this, you actually end up kind of skipping a lot of steps. I'm just going to show you all the steps just to be sure. So I'll call this E2 just to be safe. Now, it also goes 1 half I omega squared. So let's actually delve into this one. So that means it's going to be, well, in this case, it's not just going to be omega. Actually, I should go back here and fix it because it's not going to be omega. It's going to be 3 omega. But I need to delve deeper in this thing right here, so I need to go E2 equals, let's see, it's 1 half, 
Remember what i is. i is 2 fifths m, which is the same mass, but radius is 2r, that whole thing is squared, all that times, uh, I'm supposed to say uh, 3 omega, by the way, I forgot my squared here, didn't I? So it's supposed to be times 3 omega squared. Let's deal with this. A lot of stuff happening here. So first of all, I can cancel out the twos like before, yay. And let's figure out what happens here. So I've got m, yes, that's true. I've still got an m here. I've got 2r squared. Now keep in mind, that's 2 squared r squared. It's really important you don't forget that. That means it's a 4r squared. And I've got 3 omega squared. That means it's 3 squared omega squared. 3 squared is 9 omega squared. All that over uh, 5. So that means an E2, let's just do it to all over here. What's 4 times 9? Oh, that's 36. So I have 36 times m r squared omega squared. All that over 5. That's my second equation, or new. And now what I do is I always just do, well, then new over old. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now, again, if you've done this a lot of times, you'll recognize, hey, anything that's got an mr squared omega squared, just ignore it. In fact, even the fives can be ignored. But let me just show you all the details in case you're not sure. So let me just show you the full details here. So that means let me just write down the whole equation here just so you can see it all. But like I said before, as those who have a lot of experience with this, We'll just ignore anything that's the same in both. So this one here I go E equals, and it was just M R squared omega squared over five. Now here's the beautiful part. Lots of stuff cancels out. The M R squareds cancel out, don't they? Let me see here. So M R squareds cancel out the M R squareds. Omega squareds cancel out and the fives cancel out. In other words, all I end up with I end up with just E2 over E. That just equals, oops, I'll just make a nicer E here. That equals just 36. So that means then finally I can say that E2 is just equal to, well, I move my E over to the right, so it's just 36E. Now this could have been like a multiple choice question or something like that, but this is actually how you could deal with something like this. So whenever I see a ratio kind of question, I always just find an equation for old, an equation for new, and I do new over old. And you notice what we did before? We just learned that the rotational version of kinetic energy is very similar to the linear version. We just have to transpose the different variables. Hooray!